I'm inspired by um, my family and our love for one another. That's, that's a strong one. Um, I'm also inspired by the poetic possibilities nature affords all of us, right? And um, of course, the light. Um, the light allows us to sort of celebrate life today. And it also allows us to um, have that hope for maybe an, e an even brighter tomorrow, right? And uh, I also love the quiet winter months. Uh, I find them a great time to be uh, introspective, reflective, and creative. I think some of my best work comes out of those months as a result of that. And snow is just a ton of fun to paint. I am incredibly fortunate to be able to live on a family property deeded to my ancestors by the King of England on the Outer Cape. What inspires me most in my art would be the beauty of the nature that surrounds my home. I love how the light illuminates the landscape and the sea throughout the changes of weather and seasons. I think I'm most drawn by the intricacy of the fine details of everything around me that often goes unnoticed by others. I paint flowers because I'm, I'm interested in flowers. I, 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 I'm interested in uh, many aspects of, uh, of the science of, uh, of, of how they grow and why they grow. I'm interested in the patterns of light that are cast on their, their, their petals. I'm interested in the mathematics of their re repeating shapes. Uh, those, those are the things that, that I'm interested in and that's why I, I paint these flowers. As far as inspiration, um, my inspiration comes from a very different different place. What has inspired me over the years has been uh, examining and appreciating other artists' work. And this, this goes way back uh, for me, but particularly in high school, um, you know, when I made my first trip to the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston and I saw my my, my, my first glimpse of uh, old master's paintings. What inspires me? People, paint, and other artists. I love to watch people. I love the way they sit, stand, move, and balance themselves. Posture is very important to me. It's all about body language and the emotions that it reveals. I usually avoid faces because as soon as you paint a face, it dominates the whole painting. I prefer to focus on color and form, letting the emotion come through the figure and its gesture. There's a compelling tension between the beauty of the paint itself and the subject that it depicts. One emerges from the other as if the paint were a force of nature. In developing my own style, I've studied the work of the California school artists, Nathan Oliveira, Diebenkorn, and many others. But another artist that inspires me is my father, Albert Petito. This is Albert. He was a sculptor who specialized in how people use their bodies in sports and other activities. He also liked to take pictures. That's him with a camera. I recently came across a stack of photographs that he took in the 1930s and 40s. He had a great eye for human activity. I've started a new series of paintings based on his photographs, a project that spans two generations. Albert Petito was able to capture elements of the life force of the people he photographed. Moved by his vision, I am trying to represent this sense of life in my own work. Um, years ago, I heard uh, someone was asked, uh, how do you find your inspiration? And the answer was, I find inspiration by showing up every day. So um, that's kind of my philosophy. Uh, if I come in here, get to work, then things start happening, and uh, then I'm happy. So right now I'm working on a painting of Provincetown in the off season. Uh, it's Commercial Street in a kind of an evening scene where the lights are coming on in the buildings. Um, uh, there's no people in the street. Uh, just um, just the, the look at the buildings 
the architecture, the, the lights um, glowing from inside different storefronts, uh, which I find interesting. So most of my inspiration is uh, scenes of Cape Cod, since this is where I live. The, nat the nat natural environment and the beaches are certainly wonderful, and uh, the architecture, the buildings, um, the towns that are nearby, and um, also the people. Uh, I do a lot of paintings of fishermen, uh, mostly fishermen in Chatham, but um, other places too. And uh, it's fun to see the, the working people, and see how I can portray them in my paintings. I also find inspiration by inviting people to my studio and uh, once a week we all paint together. I'll hire a model or a, and sometimes a musician and uh, we'll all paint together and it's a great way to bring people together. What inspires me? The sea. The waves, the sounds, the smells. I love the salt air. I love the sea foam. I love the marine life. I love just sitting in the surf and seeing what washes up. My studio. I keep it filled with all my favorite things. It's filled with shells. It's filled with painting supplies and I love being here in the winter when I can crank up the heat and I don't have any projects due so I can just play and experiment and it just helps with new pieces so much. I love having my dog here. My pug is with me all the time. I've been trying new techniques and new mediums and it's fun to just experiment. The question of what inspires me is a bit complicated because I'm often not aware um, in the moment of, of why I'm motivated to paint or uh, what my paintings are about. And that's partially because of the way I make paintings, that it's a evolutionary process where I, I don't start with any particular idea in general. As I go along, things become revealed to me and uh, that has something to do with what's most likely going on in my life. Um, there are particular painters that inspire me. Um, this goes back to uh, growing up in Chicago and being able to go to the Art Institute there and see the, some of the great works by um, Impressionists and Post-Impressionists like uh, Sir Rod. And I, you know, to see the Sunday in the Park painting, um, you know, in person is is. Uh, completely inspiring right there. Um, Van Gogh, uh, the Monet haystacks, I remember seeing those. I dreamed of being able to paint like that. When I actually started uh, delving into painting, um, painters that inspired me are, are uh, some of the California painters from the 50s, like David Park and Richard Diebenkorn. To me, they're such masterworks of color and design. And of course, I'm inspired by the you know the amazing place I get to live here on Cape Cod whether it's you know the ocean the sky uh, the the dunes the little cottages and and also in my second home in, in Merida Mexico which is you know very colorful and uh, rich in its own um, landscape visual landscape I find inspiration everywhere. Um, I don't always know where I'm going to be inspired or what is going to inspire me, but when I am looking for inspiration, I go to the ocean. The ocean is the most reliable source of inspiration for me. The expansiveness, I think, is what is at the root of all of it, but I love painting Sunsets, sunrises, fog, storms coming in. Um, I also really love painting people, and I love painting people in and around the ocean. I love the ocean as a backdrop for portraits. I love the shapes of people. I love the charm of the way they interact with each other, or I love the experience of a person being alone in the expansiveness of a seascape. And I also really love living in New England, and I am inspired by the seasons here, and not so much visually, although I am. I find inspiration in every season. 
But I love the cyclic nature of living in the seasons that in the summer it's such a busy time and I'm out so much more and taking so many photos and sketches and just gathering so much material. And I love that the winter is a time to be much more quiet and reflective and gather images together and, and paint a lot more. I'm in the studio a lot more and I love that time also. What I find most inspirational is experimentation. I like to spend some time in the winter months just pushing my skill sets to the absolute limit. Taking them up to that edge, pushing them over that edge, getting frustrated, really just tying my canvas in a knot and trying to find my way out. And it's usually this experimentation where I'll find a new and creative way to solve an old problem. For me, I think I'm most inspired by my family. My wife and two daughters they really drive me to become a better artist. And the beauty of it is, I don't even think they realize that. Uh, it's just part of our home and it's uh, one of the many things that we do. And I'm very fortunate for that. I also think that inspiration, uh, especially in the winter months, can come from uh, doing some deep investigation into the paintings that got away uh, or the concepts that, that didn't happen for whatever reason. Um, uh, I start to really look at my old photographs and, and older sketches or, or plenty of paintings and uh, I can go back years and um, kind of have that light bulb go off that, oh, you never got around to that one or, or something, something else came up as far as a, a outdoor painting that maybe made it so that I couldn't get to a studio painting that was really in the back of my mind. So um, that's one way to get inspired. Kind of go back through the notes and, and see what you can find. Um, I think that might be true in life as well. I, I mean, remembering and embracing the enjoyable parts of our past uh, can help inspire the present and the future. I'm going to try something a little different with inspiration. I made a list. Things that motivate me, things that inspire me, the stuff that really gets me going. So I'm going to read the list. It's in no particular order. Here we go. Other artists, rock music from the 70s and 80s, cast shadows, old people, young people, textures, antiques, uncomplicated things, John Singer Sargent, Winslow Homer, hardworking people, furniture making, challenges, positive and negative feedback, Cooking Without a Recipe, Remodeling, Andrew Wyeth, Drawing from Memory, Repurposing, The Boss, Tower of Power, Bike Riding, Loud Music, The Adrenaline Rush, Finding Something to Paint, Setting Up a Scene, Our Kids, Our Grandkids, Our Italian Background, Sports, Observing, Watching, Simplicity, Talking with People, very inspiring. I wanted to tell you two things that I do to help me get uh, moving and excited about you know, being an artist and about making paintings. A lot of times people will come across me outdoors with my easel and ask, how do you get your ideas to, for what to paint? And I like to tell them, well, I don't really try to get ideas. What I do try to get are experiences. And there's a big difference. There's two things that I do on a regular basis that I'd recommend for everybody. I'd recommend everybody look at the work of artists who've gone down the path before us. Uh, one of my favorites is the painter Edward Hopper. This is Hopper's uh, studio in South Truro in Cape Cod. Hopper's paintings are records of extraordinary moments that he had. Uh, I think looking at work by really good painters like that teaches us, uh, teaches our eyes like uh, how to see more deeply, how to see more fully. Today I would like to talk a little bit about what inspires me. My family and friends, those that have gone before, those that are here now, and those yet to come, are what inspire me to be the person that I am. But it's the things that I see around me that inspire me as an artist. 
We all know that we can't see color or shape without light, so it all comes down to the light. It's the way the light falls across objects to reveal their color, cast a beautiful shadow, and reveal their shape is what compels me to paint. This time of year, the light is a little lower in the sky and maybe not quite as bright, but the colors are still compelling. They're deeper, a little more muted, but still beautiful. So I encourage you to take a breath, look around, and find what inspires you.